Hey guys, this is Marcos, your TA for Econ 2A, and I'm going to be going over the next couple of sections for you guys. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, so this is chapter 14 in your book. It is on market powers and market structures. So the chapter objective is to learn how to set prices when you have market power. Um, and the first section is going to be on monopoly, oligopoly, and mon monopolistic competition. So we're going to evaluate how market structure shapes the market power these businesses have. All right, so market structure is important because it shapes your market power. Market power is the extent to which a seller can charge a higher price without losing many sales to competing businesses. There are a few different types of market structure. And there's perfect competition, monopoly, oligopoly, and monopolistic competition. Ooh, having a hard time with that one. Um, so we're gonna go through each one of those, discuss what they are and their differences. So perfect competition, perfect competition, um, perfectly comp competitive markets are markets in which all businesses in an industry still an identical good. And there are many sellers and many buyers, each of which, each of whom is small relative to the size of the market. So it just means there's many firms selling the identical product with many buyers. Um, so sellers in this case have no market power because it's perfectly competitive. So um, anytime some business in this um, perfectly competitive market does something that um, consumers don't like, they'll just go to the next business that sells the exact same thing and um, the market is perfectly competitive. So not one buyer has any market power. I mean, not one seller, excuse me. Monopoly. So monopolistic markets are markets in which there's only one seller, basically the opposite of a perfectly competitive markets. So the seller has all the market power in this case. Uh, oligopoly, oligopolistic markets just butchered that geez um oligopolistic markets are markets with only a handful of large sellers so the sellers have some market power and if you look at an example here it's um, major cell phone uh carriers these are um verizon at&t sprint and t-mobile this would be an example of an oligopoly where there's many firms each with um a large but not complete market power monopolistic competition. So a monopolistically competitive markets, market are markets in which many small businesses compete, each selling um, differentiated products. So they're gonna be similar, but still differentiated. So product differentiation, differentiation is efforts by sellers to make their product different from those of their competitors. The sellers again have some market power. So, um, a very common example of this would be um, restaurants. So restaurants, or maybe even more specifically restaurants within a certain type of restaurant. So um, an example of a monopolistic uh, competitive market would be maybe pizza chains, where there's a lot of pizza chains, a lot of pizza businesses who each sell a similar product, which is pizza, but they each sell a pizza that's slightly different. It's not going to be exactly the same where you go when you go to um, Domino's versus um, Papa Gino's versus some small uh, corner store pizzeria place in your area. So they each have some market power, but they still, none of them have complete power and they each sell um, a differentiated product. So here's basically all of the um, market powers we just went through in um, basically a straight line to showing from the ones with, where a business has the least amount of market power to on the right where the business has um, the most market power. So again, perfect competition. There's many competitors, identical products. And this is the case where a business in a perfectly competitive market is going to have the least market power. The middle is going to be monopolistic competition and oligopoly. Um, so yeah, mon monopolistic competition is probably going to be closer to here with less market power. Oligopoly is going to be on this side closer to more market power. Um, so there's few competitors in oligopoly and they sell differentiated products in monopolistic competition and in some oligopolies. And then 
of course, the most market power is going to be monopoly where there's no competitors and there's a unique product because they're the only ones that sell that product. Um, so market structure determines market power, as you've seen. So the structure with the least market power is perfect competition. The, at the other extreme, monopolists have the most market power because they're the only business selling a unique product. Both perfect competition and a monopoly are rare. Most businesses operate in imperfectly competitive markets. In perfect competition, the situation of facing at least some competitors and or selling products that differ at least a little from others, um, from those of competitors. All right, practice question one. Um, which of the following has the most market power? Uh, you get to pause it if you want, take a minute to look at it and um, unpause it when you're ready. But the answer is going to be right now. Monopoly. So yeah, pretty straightforward, I think. They're the only sellers, so they're going to have the most market power. Um, five key insights into imperfect competition. The following insights will set the agenda for the rest of our study of business strategy. Market power allows you to pursue independent pricing strategies. Having more competitors leads to less market power. Um, does that make sense? The more competitive, competitive businesses in your market, the less power you're going to have. Successful product differentiation gives you market power, gives you more market power. Again, makes sense. I think it's intuitive that um, if you create a product that's slightly different and it's more innovative than other products, you're going to have that advantage in that moment where you're going to have a product that gives you um, a slight advantage compared to the other businesses. And perfect competition among buyers gives them bargaining power. Um, so in this case, it makes sense again, imperfect competition among buyers. So if um, buyers are not being competitive, or if there isn't competition among buyers, um, they're going to have more bargaining power. So they're going to be more sought after and they'll have um, a bigger say in, in uh, the pricing for that good. And your best choice depends on the actions that other businesses make. So um, this is a slightly more advanced economics. You guys probably won't see this in class, but it has to do more with like game theory. So um, sometimes the best choice a business can make will be based off what other businesses are doing. So discussion question, assess the market power of the following sellers. What do you think each of these um, companies fall into in their market? Do you think they're in a perfectly competitive market? Do you think they're in a monopoly? Do you think they're um, somewhere in the middle with an oligopoly or monopolistic competition? Um, you guys think about it and uh, come to my office hours on Friday if you want to talk about it at 1130. But the first is your cable, your, you own a cable company or broadband provider like Fios. Um, the second is uh, Apple whose phones compete with Android. And then the final one is um, a scalper selling concert tickets through StubHub, an online marketplace. Where do you guys think each of these fall, fall into? And that's it. That's it for 14.1. So I'll see you guys in the next section, 14.2 in a little bit.